So the first, the first term to make your eyes glaze over and think, why would I take accounting is GAAP or generally accepted accounting principles. Um, oh, oh, one other thing. So a lot of this terminology based stuff, or they have a lot of things that were like careers in accounting. I just sort of like skip over it in my lecture. Um, so if you're, if you're doing the homework and there's something that seems like it's that content, you'll have to probably go back and read. You, you should be reading through the book anyway. Okay. I know all college students do. They read the book carefully. You should be, remember like, we're not supposed to like just be giving you all this information. It's supposed to be a combination of your reading through the book, us providing some information in class and then working through stuff together. That's how we learn. Uh, so there will occasionally be stuff that comes up in the homework that is not something I covered directly here. Go look at the book, okay? Because I just skip over a lot of the terms or else we'd spend all this time on like learning these different terms instead of the ones that really matter. Um, okay, so generally accepted accounting principles is the financial system of the United States, okay? It's different in other countries, but here we use GAAP. Um, what that means is it's a collection of accounting standards or sort of rules, or maybe like the pirate code, like guidelines, right? That we use and they include accounting standards, which are the actual rules, and then principles, which are like, hey, if a rule doesn't apply to this, then what's what's the principle at hand here? Like, how do we know if this is okay or not okay? Okay. And so whenever it says GAAP, that's what it means is just how we do accounting in the US um, and, and uh, the rules that we're sort of held to. Um, in, the, in the United States, we have what's called FASB or the Financial Accounting Standards Board. They're the ones who sort of make the rules for how we account. So we're not talking about law. Law is made by Congress, right? Instead, there's laws, and then there's somebody saying, well, how should accountants do things so that they're ensuring they're adhering to all the legal and other requirements? Financial Accounting Standards Board is a group of accountants who say, this is how accounting should be done so that it's adhering to the rules, okay? But then we also have as governing bodies what's called the SEC, or the Securities and Exchange Commission. They do almost anything that has to do with stock being bought or sold. Um, and then outside of the United States, most countries use what's called IASB or the International Accounting Standards Board. They make all the rules. And so as usual, the, the, the US is like, we do things our own way here. You will note that GAAP, Generally Accepted Accounting Principles in the United States and IASB are converging, meaning more and more the rules are the same for everybody. Just because I think it has to be because commerce is becoming more international all the time. Okay. If you do business in Arizona, for example, there's a good chance you're working with Mexican national firms. And the fact that you're using different financial accounting rules can create issues. And so more and more, we're just moving toward an international standard that's, that's not that they were ever super far off, but once we learn about different concepts, you'll see that I'll, I'll show you the difference between the two. All right. So now we're getting down to stuff that I think matters more than remembering what GAAP and IASB stand for. Um, so we have different, in account, the people always say, why is accounting called accounting? And the answer is because we deal with accounts. <laughs> that makes perfect sense, doesn't it? We deal with accounts and we tend to break our accounts into a few types. And these are the accounts. So the first are called assets. This tells you that an asset is a resource owned by a business which to me means not a whole lot, right? What does that even mean? Anybody have a more, uh, a more plain English definition of asset, the term asset, what you would think it means? That doesn't work anyway. What's an asset? Nobody? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So things that have value that the business can actually own. Okay. You have to be careful because people will always say like human resources, employees are assets. They're not, you don't own people. Okay. Um, you can, in one sense of the word, say they're assets, they bring value to the business, but they're not actually an asset from an accounting standpoint, something that the business owns. Most common assets would be buildings, land, um, Cash is an asset, 
right? If you have cash in your bank, that's things that has value and that you can, that you own and that you can use to run the business. One of the weird ones we'll learn about is something called accounts receivable. That's when your customers owe money to you. That's an asset because it gives you a claim to money from a customer. So assets are things that you own. And then liabilities are things that you owe. So debts, if I owe money to someone else, that's called a liability. That's the accounting term for it. Um, there's, there's more than one type of liability. We'll learn a lot more about the different types, but generally they either come up from me directly borrowing money from you, that's a liability, or in a business arrangement, a lot of times they come up when someone says, hey, here's the, here's the goods I promised you and delivers goods to us and then tells us, hey, you can pay me in 30 days, right? So that's still a form of borrowing, but it, they, we didn't borrow cash. We just, you know, it happens all the time. Suppliers deliver stuff and say, pay us within the next 30 days. But also things like when our employees work for us. If you do work for me and I haven't yet paid you, I owe you. So there's a liability, okay? So that's what a liability is. Assets are what we own and liabilities are what we owe. And then there's these weird ones. The rights of the owners of the company is called equity. And you're like, I don't know what that means. What it means is if a business has assets, it owns stuff and it has liabilities, it owes stuff. Then if we subtract the debt it owes to people from what it actually owns, what's left over is what's called the equity. And this is the part that belongs to the owners. So if you think about it, if I own a house, I think I own it, and the, the house was $200,000, but I have a debt to the bank for $50,000 of that $200,000, that I don't really own the whole $200,000 worth of house. I only own $150,000. The bank owns the other $50,000. So we would say my asset is worth 200,000. My liability is 50,000. The difference between the two is my equity or the amount that actually belongs to me, the 150,000. And so that brings up this equation, which is assets plus, oh, sorry, plus liabilities equal equity. This is they call the fundamental accounting equation. It's sort of the basic equation that we'll use throughout the rest of the course. So what a business owns plus what it owes is equals the equity, okay? Or if we rewrote it like this, we'd be like, well, let's just go through some, some examples and it'll make more sense. Actually, I just wrote this totally wrong. I've been doing this for 20 years. Tell you my brain's gone. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. It's fundamental to what I do and I just did it wrong. So that doesn't make me feel real strong today. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. Please write it down correctly or you'll be confused the rest of the semester. I could have just gone to the next slide, right? There it is. Sometimes you'll see it written as stockholders equity. That's because in a corporation, the owners are called stockholders, okay? Uh, in a small business that's not a corporation, they usually will just say owner's equity or something like that. So assets equal liabilities plus equity. And then here, right, this is just a restatement of that same equation, where I did assets minus liabilities equal stockholders equity, basic algebra change. So there's the fundamental accounting equation. So when we do accounting, so I'm, I'm married to an artist and she tends to see the world in a very broad and generalized way. She sees all the colors. She would look outside and she would, I would say that tree is green with a brown trunk and she would see 50 or 60 different shades of green in, that, in those leaves. That's how her brain processes information. The way the sun hits it, it's gonna make this one brighter, this one darker. I don't see things that way. I tend to be like green and brown. I'm good with that. Um, and so one of the first things that you have to sort of guard against 
is someone mowing right outside your window while you're trying to talk. Uh, one of the first things you have to guard against in accounting is trying to, to see too big. My wife, it, it benefits her in her business, right? She, she, paints, she paints things for a living. Um, but for me, what I have to do is take each transaction piece by piece without trying to expand it to the broader thing. The accountant's job is to record transactions and then later we'll provide analysis on what they all mean. But while we're doing the part, of the recording part of it, it's piece by piece. So all business transactions can be stated in terms of changes in the elements of the accounting equation. So here we have a company purchase, purchasing land for $50,000. That would be a business transaction. It doesn't matter what they're gonna use the land for. It doesn't matter any of that. What matters is, we need to know how to record the transaction for the purchase of land for $50,000. So we break it down into pieces to make that, to record that. All right, so here's our first transaction. I'm actually gonna walk you through a bunch of sample transactions and how they affect this basic accounting equation. So this book, for some reason, this new book we've switched to, they do this whole two zero Y three and it like confuses everybody. Um, all the why means is some given year. I guess they're wanting it to be just as relevant in 2013 as it is in 2023 or whatever. So don't just get used to that. Don't let it bug you. That's just the year they're using, okay? So in our first transaction, Chris Clark deposits $25,000 in a bank account in the name of Net Solutions in exchange for shares of common stock in the corporation. So we have an individual who has gone and filed all the paperwork with the state to create a corporation, and now they're funding their corporation, okay? I don't bet you didn't know that, but that's how businesses get money, is just by the owners putting money into the business. That's it. So we'd ask ourselves, okay, well, what accounts are being impacted here and in what way? And so we'll see that the assets of the business are increasing and the equity of the business are increasing. Which asset are we dealing with? In this case, it's cash. The business had zero cash before. Now that the owner has taken their own money and put it into the business, the business has $25,000 in cash. So the way to sort of break this down would be to say, what's happening? So when, when I have to look at one of these and analyze it, I'm saying the owner is taking $25,000 and putting it into the business. So the business's cash is gonna increase and the business's equity is gonna increase. And the reason we know the equity increases is because there's no liability or debt involved. Okay, remember assets always equal liabilities plus equity. So assets go up by 25,000. Liabilities are still zero. The equity is 25,000. It all balances. The equation, the fundamental accounting equation must always be in balance. That's like rule number one. If it's out of balance, something's wrong and we need to go back and figure it out. So we just did it. We recorded our first, our first transaction. Remember that equity or stockholders equity just means the amount of the business, the owner that belongs to the owner. So if the business has $25,000 worth of assets and no debt, no liabilities, then all of that 25,000 belongs to the owners. Better, if they just put it in there, right? All right, so here's the second transaction. They pay $20,000 for the purchase of land as a future building site. So again, I have to say what's happening. Well, if they're paying 25,000, their cash is going down or decreasing by 25,000. And what's happening in exchange for it, they're getting land. We don't worry about the value of the land as far as like if we hired an appraiser and what would the appraiser say the land is worth? We worry about in accounting, we always worry about the cost. So we'd say, what was the cost of the land? I think it's great that you're wearing an office shirt because if you think about it, if you're in accounting, it means you're training to be either like Phyllis, who's the accountants, not Stanley, like Kevin. Yeah, you're like, I'm not sure those are the people I want to emulate. But uh, <laughs> so I would ask myself, what's happening? Cash is going down, land is going up. They're both assets in this case, okay? So one of the things you're gonna to have to sort of learn over the next few weeks is like, like I just did that really fast, like land's an asset because I've done it for a long time. It, it, it'll take time for you to just get comfortable with the idea. Assets are all these different things we can own like land and buildings, et cetera. If you've had accounting in school before, you might have a little jump on that idea. 
So the asset cash goes down, the asset ca land goes up. Now my balance is 5,000 in the cash account and 20,000 in the land account. No liability change, right? I didn't borrow any money from anyone. That's, you always have to talk yourself through that. So we said, I'll have our stockholders equity of 25,000. So our assets equal 25,000 and our stockholders equity equals 25,000. How much of this 25,000 in assets belongs to the shareholders? 25,000, because there's no debt, okay? No liabilities. Oh, this one, they got smaller print. November 10th, Net Solutions purchases supplies for $1,350 and they agree to pay their supplier in the near future. So they got supplies, but they haven't yet paid for them, okay? So again, what's happening? Well, supplies are an asset. There's something the business owns that they use for the running of the business. So our supplies account will go up 1350, but then our, we didn't pay cash for it. So our cash won't change. So now we have a special liability called accounts payable. Accounts payable just means money that I owe to suppliers typically, okay? So now our liability goes up by 1350. So see my total assets is 5,000 in cash, 1,350 in supplies and 20,000 in land for 26,350. And my liabilities are 1,350 in accounts payable. And then my stockholders equity is still 25,000. So they balance, that's step one, right? Figure out they, they balance. Um, but this is our first time having a liability. So now we would say in essence, even though the business has $26,350 worth of assets, we only, the, the owners actually only own 25,000 worth. The other 1350 are owned by our creditors, someone that we owe money to, okay? Transaction D, we receive cash of $7,500 for providing services to customers. So if we receive cash, which accounts are impacted? cash account, and that's going up, right? Because we received cash. What else is happening? Okay, yeah, so they created an account, whoever made this, okay. Well, no, I mean, it's right there, but I'm just trying to get let you guys do it for a minute. It, fees earned is an account that's called a revenue account, okay? So I talked about assets, liabilities, and equity. There's two other types of, or groups of accounts. One's called revenue. Revenue is what we earn by doing our business, okay? So like I own a storage business, I rent storage units to people and the money they pay me for those storage units is revenue. I'd probably call it like storage fees or something like that. That'd be the name of the account, but what type of account is it? It's a revenue account, money that we earn from doing business. My wife paints, so she paints a mural on someone's wall and they pay her $2,500 or something. She would probably record that as like, mural painting revenue or something like that, but it's, it's, it's a revenue account. Revenues, what they do is they increase our stockholders equity. Anytime we earn money by providing services or goods to somebody, our stockholders equity goes up, okay? Um, anytime we have to pay out money as part of doing business, we pay what's called an expense. That might be the cost of insurance. So that if somebody gets hurt at my storage while they're working on their stuff there, they don't sue me, they'd sue my insurance, right? The cost of my employees, that's, those are all expenses, okay? So in this case, our cash goes up by 7,500 and then our stockholders equity goes up by 7,500 uh, through earning revenue. So those, these are the really big key terms I need you to try to work on understanding as you move through this first chapter. Assets, Liability, equity, or stockholders' equity. Consider those the same term, okay? Revenue and expense. There'll be one more we'll add here in a minute, but these are the biggies. You gotta wrap your brain around what they mean so we can work with them. All right. Transaction D, instead of receiving cash at the time of service that services are provided, a business may accept payment at a later date. When that happens, so if some, let's say I provide service to somebody now and I say, hey, you have 30 days to pay me or 60 days or whatever terms I give them to pay me. What I do is I create an asset that's called an account receivable. Account receivable 
Anytime you see receivable in something in an account's name, that means it's an asset. It means it's money that's owed to you by someone else. Now, it's not as good of an asset as cash. And what I mean by good is cash I can spend today to pay my employees, to buy the things I need. Receivables, I can't spend. I have to collect them first. So they're kind of like a second order asset in the sense that they're not fully available to me yet, but they're pl promised to me or pledged to me, okay? So we call, whenever someone owes us money, it's called a receivable. Uh, and then usually it's called accounts receivable, or sometimes they'll say it's a, you make a sale on account, which means they didn't pay you, but they'll pay you later, okay? So in transaction E, these guys pay some expenses. They pay wages, rent, utilities, and miscellaneous, whatever that means, some type of expense. And so again, you'll say, okay, if I'm paying an expense, what's happening? My cash is going down. And then my expenses get listed over there as part of my stockholder's equity, okay? I think what you'll figure out as you do a little bit of accounting is like the math is not hard, right? This has all been addition and subtraction. The hardest thing is the whole like classifying things into the right accounts, getting that straight, because that's like a new language when you haven't done it before. You just have to kind of figure it all out. Um, so again, cash goes down by 3650. You'll see that expenses reduce stockholders equity, whereas the revenue increased it, right? And so at the end, they all have to still balance. Every time they still have to balance, um, that's important because if it doesn't, you got an error, you got to find it. Here they pay their creditor $950. So again, if they're paying, their cash is going down and then their accounts payable is also going down, right? The, the amount they owed is decreasing. They don't owe as much as they used to owe. Uh, this one's sometimes hard for people because you feel like if you're paying money, it should be an expense. But in the case where uh, this was from the buying of the supplies earlier, so the supplies went up when we bought them and now we're just paying them off. There's still no expense. There'll be an expense for the supplies when we use them up, okay? And we'll go through that process at another time. So many transactions. Welcome to accounting. All right. Um, November 30th, they determined the cost of supplies on hand at the end of the month was $500. So if I had $1,350 worth of supplies, and then I counted up all my supplies at the end of the month, and I only had 500 left, it means I must have used up $800 worth, or 550 left, I guess, right? So you'll see these problems, and yet you have to kind of like make the jump of what they're trying to get you to do. It's pretty normal. Like if you think about it, like here at the college, they have like a supply room. And so if my office is out of sticky notes, I can just go up there and get some sticky notes and they record it down. It's, it's normal that we're not like, they're not like keeping track of each sticky note. Instead, what we're doing is we know how our, what, what our balance was of our supply account. Then at the end of the month, we just count them up and be like, oh, this is the amount we use during the month. And at that point, we claim it as a supplies expense. So supplies goes down and supplies expense. Transaction H, the last term up here, dividends. A dividend is a share of a company's profits or its net income that it pays out to the owners, okay? Why do I own a business? Is it because I like to work my butt off on the weekends? No, it's because I want to make money, right? Like, honestly, that's why I have a business. Because I love the feeling I get when people get to store their stuff. No, it's the money I make from them storing their stuff. Like, like let's just be honest. So a dividend is where, it, like in this case, at the end of this month, they say, hey, we made some money this month. We had revenue of $7,500. Fees earned. We only had expenses of about, what, $9.25? 37, let's say we only had expenses of around $4,000. So we made like $3,000 this month. Let's treat yourself and take a couple thousand dollars of that and put it in our pocket as the owners. So a dividend is just a distribution of cash from the business to the owners, okay? So dividends will reduce our cash 
but they're not a revenue or an expense. They're their own thing. They still reduce stockholders' equity, but we have to record them separately. And honestly, the only reason we have to record them separately from expenses is because expenses reduce the amount of tax we have to pay the government, but dividends don't because they're not like, you can't pay it to the owner and then not pay taxes on it, right? So whenever it pays dividends, you just your cash goes down and then your dividends account, which also has a negative impact on your uh, stockholders' equity goes down. Still in balance, we're good. All right, so here's a summary of all the transactions we just went through. I know it's a lot. It feels pretty big to be a summary, but if you break it all down, that's all the transactions we just recorded, okay? For some businesses, like I'm the, I'm the treasurer for our little AYSO soccer league here, that's as many transactions as you have in a month in real life, that's it. So it's a pretty easy job if you just keep in track of that for a whole month. Other businesses have way more transactions than that in a day, think how many transactions like Walmart has in a day. Every time a person uses a cash register or a self-checkout, that's another transaction, right? So, so depends on the type of business you're dealing with, how big or how small of a job it is and how many accountants they actually need. Um, uh, the last sort of concept here is, so when we talk about financial accounting, we're talking about, about ways to communicate financial information to people who are not the big users of it, okay? Just people who need a summary of it, the owner of the business, the managers. They're not financial experts a lot of times, but they do need some summary of what happened in the business. So after we've kept all of these transactions throughout the month, then what we're going to do is we're going to create statements. And there's four primary financial statements that we'll learn about in this course uh, that, we'll, that we'll have to keep. The first is called the income statement. The income statement, this might be hard to see here. The income statement is a summary of a business's revenue and expenses. Revenue for this business was called fees earned. Then all of the expenses are listed. And at the bottom, they have something called net income. Net income is how much your revenue was higher than your expenses, right? Or your, sometimes people call it your net profit. That's the money the business made after expenses. If you had more expenses than revenue, then you have what's called a net loss. It means you lost money during that, that period. And when we talk about periods, we mean a, a, a time period, okay? Sometimes you'll see an income statement for a monthly period or a quarterly period, a quarter is three months, uh, or for an, an annual or yearly period. All right, the second statement that we'll learn about is called the Statement of Stockholders' Equity. It summarizes the changes in the stockholders' equity over the period. So in this case, it starts with, has the common stock, the retained earnings. We'll add in the net income, because remember that that was our revenue minus our expenses that we got from here. And then we'll subtract out the dividends and that'll give us the change. So. What was our stockholders' equity at the beginning of the period, plus any money we earned through net income, minus any dividends we paid, will give us our equity at the end. The third is called the balance sheet. It summarizes our assets, our liabilities, and our stockholders' equity. And it's always in that order. And again, we'll learn more about it, so don't worry about having to memorize what all this means today. But you might, in a note, say, balance sheet has assets, liabilities, and equity. And remember, since we know that the fundamental accounting equation is assets equal liabilities plus equity, we know that the assets part has to equal the liabilities plus the equity part. This is sort of the summary, if you think about it, of that basic financial accounting equation. And then the last one is called the statement of cash flows, which I'm not even gonna give you an example of, we won't get deep into it yet, but it just summarizes how much cash came into the company and how much cash is going out. Um, each chapter, we'll learn a couple of these little ratios. Um, the first one is called total liabilities to stockholders' equity. These are what we use when we're trying to make decisions using financial information. And so this first one is where we just take the total liabilities and we divide it by the total stockholders' equity. And that will give us a ratio or a relationship, that's what ratio means, right, between those two figures. So if our liabilities, if you think about it, assets equal liabilities plus equity. So here we're saying, well, what's our liabilities over or divided by? 
our equity. Okay. So if half of our assets were owned by us and the other half were liabilities owned by someone else, the bank, someone we borrowed from, then this ratio would come out to one because you'd have the same amount of liabilities as you have equity. Does that make sense? A little? So if our debt is higher than our total stockholders equity, then our ratio of liabilities to stockholders equity will be greater than one. And if our debt is lower than our stockholders equity, then it will be less than one. So this is one of those ratios where being smaller is better, right? Being less than one means you have less debt relative to your equity, okay? Don't worry too much about it, except for right now, be able to calculate it. And then as we work with them more, it'll, they'll make more sense. Does that make sense? Sometimes step one is like figure out the process. And then step two is like, oh, now I know why we're calculating that. All right. So there's just an example of them working it out for Twitter. You'll see that their liabilities, the stockholder equity is 0.47. Alphabet, that's who owns Google, by the way, Alphabet Corporation. There's this 0.24. So we can look at those two and really quickly say, Google has a lot less debt relative to its stockholders equity uh, than Twitter. You can see there's a ma major difference in the size of those two companies. So using these ratios like this helps us sort of like not worry about size and just say as a percentage of liability to equity, who's stronger, okay? And we use that a lot when we're doing investing and things.